Good day, everybody. Welcome to Handle Barber Dave's Barber Shop at Home and our continuing series on straight razor shaving tutorials. This is actually straight razor shaving module number 104 and only one more left. And uh, we are going to do today uh, in jest, we're going to take the training wheels off uh, and we're going to kick you down the driveway and let you start maneuvering on your own. Uh, so we're getting rid of a couple things today. Uh, first and foremost, we're getting rid of the jean strop. We're hoping that you should be about 42 days in to your straight jet razor journey if you're following the curriculum correctly. If not, it's only 14 days later. But we are going to be getting rid of the jean strop in a, in, to use a regular strop. And then we're also going to be saying goodbye to the DE razor for cleanup. We're actually going to be doing everything with the straight razor. Yes, I am still using the Ralph Ost 5 8s. Um, that will change tomorrow. Um, we're going to talk about blade sizes and everything again today. So we're going to change that up a little bit with a different razor. Uh, the rest of the system is exactly the same. And, and like I said, up to your 100 day point, uh, you may want to try to do that. So let's review what we did yesterday. Uh, we talked about muscle memory and shaving. Uh, by now, uh, as again, 42 days in, you should have a pretty good muscle memory of how to do the strokes and everything else. So now we're going to throw a wrench in all that. Uh, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. We talked about finding a hone master, a uh, hone meister rather, somebody that's good at honing, whether they be professional, or whether it be amateur, you can find them all over the place. And we also offered um, that uh, we would uh, do your first honing for free uh, if you've completed the program. So at about 50, 60 days, uh, it should be time to go ahead and get one of those razors honed uh, and I'd be more than happy to do that for those participants that did that just please contact me uh, in advance. Uh, we talked about beard mapping. Now here's where we're going to start throwing a couple of wrenches and things and we'll talk about that in a little bit. I did include a, a graphic that you could download that was blank uh, that you could pin up on your mirror as you're looking at your face to see where the whiskers are growing. And I think most of you by now if you have mapped your beard realize wait a minute something's wrong. We'll go into that in more detail. We talked about blade chatter or skipping coming down the face, usually because the lather is too dry. You've, uh, your angle on your blade is a little bit too close to the face uh, and um, just not enough slickness. Uh, so immediately back off and uh, go from there as far as uh, replenishing the moisture. Uh, we talked how to approach cleanup passes with the straight razor. We're going to talk about that today. Windshield wiper, buffing, both up and down, and then of course, the, what I call the flip. Now that's the most advanced of the cleanup methods and I would be very cautious when you first start going out and make sure your blade is extremely sharp before you do that or you'll get shattered big time. Uh, we, ta we talked about how we were going to do the three pass shave with the cleanup and then we did the shave demo. We also talked about whether or not you needed to have BBS or higher. It's a personal preference. Some people two, two and they're done. I don't like to feel any whiskers at all. So that's entirely up to you. And then of course we talked about some post-save rituals. Now today I'm gonna add a, a, another post-save ritual just to see if it works. So that was a review of 103. Um, if you have any questions, once again, just put it in the comments sections right here. Okay, 104. Okay, now we're gonna throw everything to the wind. Um, we're gonna take off all the training wheels and we're gonna start throwing some new wrenches at you. Um, we're gonna talk about cross face shaving. Now, this is not something you have to do. Um, by mapping my beard and when I learned how to straight shave, which was primarily due to the Chemence video, which we'll talk about uh, in 105, um, I found that my hair growth uh, did some weird things and it was much easier for me to cross shave using both hands because I had no blind spots. So that's going to be my method to, um, uh, to suggest to you. You don't have to do it, but we'll talk about why that works in just a few minutes. Uh, we're gonna talk about razor maintenance. That means post razor maintenance, and then also stropping post shave, maybe uh, adding a hone in here and there. We'll talk about that. We're gonna talk about the proper type of strop and where to buy it. We're also going to uh, introduce you, uh, we talked about it in earlier modules about the blade sizes and the um, the different points and stuff that you have in a razor. Uh, we'll talk about that. Uh, we're going to talk again about the cleanup method and uh, we're going to talk about hyper face, uh, facial stretching, uh, which I'll show you in a little bit and that may include pinching. It may not. It depends on your face. And then we're going to go ahead and do the complete three pass cross shave with the demo and of course post shave. Okay, let's talk about the cross face shaving. Basically what we're going to be doing is I like it because there is no blind spot. So when you're in the mirror, you can see everything that you're doing. Plus, remember we talked about uh, adding quadrants. Now I add quadrants as quadrant one, quadrant two, 
quadrant, well, actually quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four, quadrant five. And then those of you that are shaving your mustache here, you could call that quadrant six. That's up to you. But for me, the smoothness in cross face shaving, it just blends into itself, for instance. And you'll see in the demo shave, but if you're going down, it's one, quadrant one, quadrant three, and I haven't switched hands. Okay, quadrant four, or quadrant three, I should say, and then down. So it works real well um, to me. It, it's a very smooth flow, and it's all about flow and efficiency as far as I'm concerned on your face. So we'll talk about more and more about that once we get into the shave. Uh, razor maintenance. Um, my suggestion is that you do, uh, if you have a strop that has both the linen and the leather component, that you do 25 to 30 on the linen component and 50 minimum on the leather component, both pre-shave and post-shave. Now, what you can also do getting down the road, and this is kind of jumping the gun just a little bit, is you can get yourself a very fine finishing stone, and you can run it across that finishing stone uh, 20 or 30 times. We're gonna go into honing um, uh, tomorrow. Uh, as well, but this is a uh, trans Arkansas stone. It's one of the finest finishers there are and what I traditionally do is post shave after I've stropped the uh, 25 Well, actually prior to the the strop at post shave is I'll run the blade um, spine leading um, I'm sorry blade leading for 30 laps on the trans arcona we'll get into that detail and then strop it what that does is that keeps the blade in tip-top shape constantly and you may not have to rehone for a long long time so that's something to mention as well okay a proper strop well there are literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of strops out there i will list a few in the comments section here um but i would recommend two things right off the bat no matter where you go and strops range from thirty dollars to four hundred dollars, it just depends on on what you uh, what you're looking for. Uh, from the very simple Illinois strop, which is a great strop, to a homemade strop, all the way up to the uh, to the Japanese strops that are hugely expensive. Uh, my favorite happens to be a Tony Miller old number two. Uh, it's done with a very very nice leather and a very nice English linen. And I would recommend that you go three inches in size. Some people like to do the X stroke pattern when they're stropping. I prefer a straight pattern, so it's really up to you. So look on the internet um, to find good strops. Illinois uh, is a good basic strop to start off with. Uh, Tony Miller, to me, is the pinnacle of strops. That's just my opinion. Uh, you've got West Holm, and there are a ton of other strops out there. So we're not gonna try to recommend one to the other. That's entirely up to you because you have slow draw strops which are a little bit harder to draw which i prefer or you've got the fast draw strops i have two i have this and i have a west home and the west home is a very fast draw that i use at the, at the barber shop so uh, it's really up to you but we'll put a couple of links down here uh, just so you can start shopping for a good strop because you do want to kind of get away from the jean strop um, it's a great travel strop but that was just to make sure that you weren't cutting things up too much uh, and buy the strop when you're comfortable that your stropping technique is consistent and that you're not going to cut up the strop because you spend $200 on a strop, you cut it. And as I said earlier, tears will come to your eyes. Um, let's talk about blade sizes. We touched on this in the earlier modules, but we'll go over it again. Uh, basically, this is a 5.8. It's measured from the spine to the bottom of the blade. And then, of course, on the toe, that is your tip or your edge. Um, and that is a round point. Now, I recommend the round points. Um, for beginning shavers and I still use and still have quite a few round points because um, they're fantastic. Uh, they are a little bit more uh, forgiving and you don't have to worry about lopping off certain parts of your face. So that's a 5 8 Now as you go up you can go into a 6 8 Now this one is a 6 8 um, made by Wacker. It's a 6 8 but with a very odd uh, extended French point and it's a shorter blade. This is called the Chevalier. This has a two and a half inch blade as opposed to three, has a very, very radical um, French point. And that can, that has been dulled a little bit, but that can uh, catch your ears real easy. So that's, that's a six eighths inch. Now, if you want to look at a regular six eighths inch uh, razor, um, this is a, this is a six eighths. This is a Dorco 11 and it's got a square point on it. That's a, sorry, a Dorco 1151. 
and uh, this is my pride and joy, uh, but it's a wonderful 6 8 inch razor. Now, if you want to go higher than that, you can go to a 7 8 inch razor. This is where you get into what they call the choppers. Now, this has got a very, very radical um, divoted French point, uh, and it comes way out. And that can really get you. And that's 7 8 And it's, it's a wide blade. Then, of course, you've got 8 8 9 8 and then uh, from there. But you can also get into um, 6 8 blades like this. Um, there's quite a few differences. Um, and then, of course, if you're looking at different types of grinds, uh, you've basically got a hollow grind, a wedge grind, a full hollow grind, and what they call a full-bellied hollow. Now, it's hard to illustrate in the camera, but that is a full-bellied hollow. And if you notice that it hollows out, and then there's a little bump at the very bottom of the blade. Now, this is a 6 8 um, Leonardo da Vinci from Santa Panicio Verasino. So there's tons and tons and tons of different blade types uh, out there. Uh, you'll find your sweet spot, whether it be 4 8 because actually you can go even smaller than, um, than that. Here is a 4 8 inch blade. This is a 4 8 inch blade. And they go down to 3 8 and even 2 8 2 8 are more for hair cutting. Uh, but they still have them. So you'll find what's comfortable to you. And if you really get into the hobby, you'll find that um, you will have hundreds of, uh, of razors uh, because you'll, you'll like them and you'll trade and you'll skip and stuff like that. So, but for today, we're going to use the good old Ralph Ost. Um, we talked about the cleanup method, which we're going to go into in a few minutes. And then we talked about hyperface uh, stretching. So we're going to get started with the chain. We're going to uh, forego the hot towel today just from a time standpoint. Uh, you want to make sure your wiping medium is uh, is wet and good and you can either put it in the sink or the side. We'll go ahead and wet our face. And as I said, today we're going to do a full cross face shave. Those of you that watched the video already on uh, 103, you know that I did this video very late on a Sunday, so I don't have a ton of whiskers to, to mow down, but and from an illustrative purpose, that'll be actually good. Okay, when we talk about mapping your beard, you know, um, I'm going to throw kind of a wrench in conventional thinking. Um, we're always taught, and this is with DE shaving as well, that there is a with the grain, against the grain, across the grain. Well, that would be a nominal, a nominal, uh, a normal uh, beard growth pattern, which is all your whiskers grow down. Chances are that there may be less than 0.1% of the population that has that happen. So when we talk about with the grain, across the grain, against the grain, it's kind of a myth because in one pass, let's say our with the grain pass, as we, cause it, as we call it, could be going with the grain up on top. It could be going across the grain down in here, and it literally could be going against the grain down here. So really, when people talk about a with the grain pass, a uh, across the grain pass and against the grain pass, technically we could do that all in one pass. What changes is the fact that that gives us a, a, way, to, a way to talk about it. Because really when you think about it, if we're doing a three pass shave, we may be doing with the grain, across the grain, against the grain three separate times. What's different is the angle of attack, the which way you're, you're hitting the whisker. And really with the with the grain, against the grain, across the grain, we're actually hitting it on three axes so we get a smooth shave. So I would argue that the with the grain, against the grain, across the game is really a myth because unless you have a face that grows whiskers perfectly, 
which I have only seen maybe once. Um, that when you map your beard, you're going to find out, oh, wow, wait a minute. If I do with the grain here, then I got to switch immediately, go across the grain, then I have to go against the grain. No, you don't have to because you're changing the angle of attack per pass. So hopefully you'll think about that for a little bit and you'll see that that's uh, pretty correct. So the uh, three pass shave is a little bit of a myth in which way you're attacking the whiskers. Okay, we're going to do the cross face shave and I've already mapped out the area, which is very important with the cross face shave. You're still going to pull up, but instead of coming over, you're going to actually come up here. And this is where the hyper stretching and the alum may work. Now, will this be your normal way of shaving? I don't know. It may or it may not be. But to me, it flows better for me. And this is based on my beard map. But I still use some of the some of the techniques in the other one based uh, based on how my my facial hair grows. So, if you're brave enough to try that, I think you'll find that the flow is uh, very very nice on it. So as I said earlier, in my face, I may have done with the grain, against the grain, across the grain in that one pass. Based on my growth pattern. Okay, so pass one is done. And really, that's where you're going to notice the major difference with... Uh, with what I've shown you over the past five modules, and that is really that with the grain pass, as we're calling it, uh, is really the only change. Everything else I do pretty much as, as I told you. So we're gonna go ahead and strop 10 on linen, 10 on leather. for the second pass. Once again, we're gonna map out and I keep repeating myself, but that's just to get that in your memory. Map out where we're gonna shave. And like I said, these are all optional items. Okay, now we're gonna do our against the grain.
And of course, um, obviously if you're shaving your mustache area, when you're doing the cross face shave, you'll come across your, your whiskers here, come across your whiskers here, and then come across your whiskers with kind of a flipping motion down. Now, as far as the against the grain, this way and this way. We're not gonna talk about the fool's pass on the lip uh, because it's just a little bit too dangerous, I think, when you're first learning. Okay, pass two is done. Once again, we're going to strop our razor uh, 10 times on each. for the final pass. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and start our across the grain. Remember, bring your finger up, hold it just like this. Pull your ear, flatten it. Now where the hyper stretching comes in is you're gonna be pulling your ear back and using your fingers to stretch even more. along with uh, blowing out your uh, blowing out your cheek as well. Okay, and once again, the hyper stretch on the cheek going up for across the grain. Flatten your hand, turn it, and then just angle the blade up. Same thing on the other side. Okay, there you go, all three passes. Now we'll do go ahead and do the cleanup. Now what I usually do is I'll rinse first, and while my face is slick, I'll start feeling around where I'm gonna need to clean up. Okay, take a little spot there. And the typical area is right here. So, 
what we'll do is we'll take a little bit of lather and just put it on those areas where you need to clean up. Now be very, very careful the first time you clean up with a straight razor because you're going to be doing some weird angles and everything else. Now, we're also going to leave the lather on because we may use it um, going forward. So now which, which um, one you do first is entirely up to you. I find with my beard growth pattern that the uh, windshield wiper works the best. So you're going to hold the blade like this, a little bit different. You're going to put your index and uh, thumb here and then kind of rest it here and then actually pronate your wrist. And this is the one time that I'll tell you not to keep your wrist straight because you just can't raise that much. So go ahead and pronate your wrist down Pull down and move your head to the opposite direction. And do a windshield whopper, washer motion. And you're also doing some buffing at the same time. Then I'll switch and I'll come down. But I'm buffing. Then I'll rinse the blade and I'll come straight up buffing. Check for smoothness. I'll wet my face again. And then the final thing is where I'll do what I call the flip. Now, once again, don't try this until you're really comfortable. You're gonna actually put the blade up against your skin. It's gonna be moving and you're gonna actually flip the blade and I'll show you. So almost you're turning the blade down, if you can see it, and then coming up. Now, a lot of people say that's a scraping motion, and I guess the argument could be made that it is, but you're getting that final bit of, uh, of lift with the blade. Same thing on this side. The windshield wiper motion. Then the blade buffing down. If you need to, use the lather, coat it on. And then again, finally, blade down, start moving, finish up. Blade down, finish up. That, I think, to me, is the best way to achieve complete BBS on, on your lower neck area. So, congratulations. You completed your first complete three-pass with cleanup shave with a straight razor. Now, I'm going to post-shave. I'm going to do something a little bit differently today. Um, I have both the Lucky Tiger Disappearing Cream and the Vanishing Cream. Now, there's been a, a, a post on a couple of the threads talking about it. And uh, I've had both, and I've been using the Vanishing Cream pretty much all the time now. But somebody made mention on the Cadre forum, and that's, by the way, www.theshavingcadre.com, that they were actually meant to be used together. Together. And I didn't really realize that until I read the labels. Now, the disappearing cream is called an aftershave. And what's funny is that it, uh, it hits you with a punch of menthol right out of the gate. So I'm going to try both. I'm still going to do the rinse at, at post, but I want to see what it does. So instead of rinsing it off immediately, I'm going to just go right into the vanishing cream. Now this does give you a nice cooling shot of menthol. It does have uh, aloe vera and everything else. Um, in fact, let me put my glasses on so I can read it. So on the disappearing cream, it's water, stearic acid, glycerin, potassium carbonate, fragrance, and aloe vera gel. Although it has menthol in it. I don't know why it's not listed on here. But uh, it says refreshing menthol cream, but it doesn't list it in the ingredients. But it does feel very nice on the skin. Now, on the vanishing cream, it is basically water, glycerin, potassium carbonate, camphor, menthol, peppermint oil, alcohol, and aloe. So it's pretty good, too. So I'm going to try them both together to see what the final post-shave feel is, because this is what I normally use uh, every day. So I may incorporate both now. 
And this is a base to whatever aftershave, you know, your fragrance to aftershave you're going to use. But it says that uh, in combination, this is more of a moisturizer. So I guess you could use this in lieu of a balm. But it's very nice because it adds that mint to it and uh, feels really good on the face. Now, you don't have to rinse that off. I do just simply because I like to have the, the base of my, uh, my aftershave. Tremendous shave. Dolphin skin baby butt smooth using that cross method. And we'll go ahead and add the uh, aftershave that we're using. And as I said, this is a natural alcohol, a well, plant-based alcohol, uh, with the Sapinifacio 70th. And it really just finishes the shave. So. So we hope that you've enjoyed uh, this series of videos. We've got one more, and the one more is going to be basically just a review of everything we've done together. Um, we're going to finish off with a little bit of the Men and Shave Talk. And then we're going to throw one other post shaver, so we're going to be using Aqua de Parma, Colonia and Sensa as far as the EDP. Okay, almost a perfect shave. So once again, you should be about 42 days in to your practice sessions. Um, with section 104, we want you to practice this for about 14 days so you can get used to the cleanup passes and uh, then we'll go right into the final. So I've been your host, uh, Handle Barber Dave with the Shaving Cadre Forum. Once again, www.theshavingcadre.com. This has been uh, Straight Razor Shaving Module 104 and we hope you enjoyed it. And please put any comments, uh, questions or anything in the comment section. Thanks and I hope you have a wonderful day.